In this video, we're going to be discussing the Sulca sign test, which can be used to detect inferior or multidirectional instability of the glenohumeral joint. To perform this test, the patient's going to be positioned in seated or standing with their arm at the side. I'm going to be showing you with the patient in seated. The PT is going to apply an inferior directed longitudinal distraction force and monitor the area around and including the acromion. This is basically a long-winded way of saying you're basically just going to take the humerus and pull it down and watch in this area around the acromion. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to grip the humerus and basically just pull it down like you see right there. Now some sources will say that with one of your hands you need to stabilize the scapula and with the other hand you pull down, but you definitely don't have to. I'm using both hands to pull the humerus down, although in that case you may need to instruct the patient to try and maintain their posture upright so they don't bend over in the direction that you're pulling down. And a positive test, which in this case is called a sulcus sign, is a depression that appears between the lateral acromion and the head of the humerus. And for this to be a true sulcus sign, the length of that sulcus, or depression, needs to be greater than a finger breadth, which is, in general, at least two centimeters. So, of course, you need to measure that to be exact. So this video at the bottom is going to demonstrate a negative sulcus sign test. So right about there is where I'm pulling down that distraction force inferiorly and you're monitoring the area around the acromion, and you don't see anything here. There's nothing remarkable because there's no inferior or multidirectional instability. So you're really not going to get much out of this by just looking at a negative test. You need to see a positive test. So this will be a positive sulca sign test. So right here the PT is doing an inferior distraction force, and then right there you see the formation of that sulca sign. Okay. Let's take a look at that one more time. So right around here, that's where the acromion is, okay? And then as the PT pulls the humerus downward, you're gonna see that inferior instability, the tendency for the humerus to want to drop down more than it ought to. And you'll see that sulcus sign, that depression open up right around here. Pull it down and it opens up right there. That right there is the sulcus sign. And the reason why you have this sulcus sign, of inferior instability, is because there's laxity of one of these two ligaments, either the superior glenohumeral ligament or the coracohumeral ligament. Now the psychometrics of the sulcus sign test are given for a sulcus that's at least two centimeters in length. Remember for a positive test, I said that that depression or sulcus needs to be at least two centimeters. And that is two centimeters between the lateral acromion and the head of the humerus while you're doing that distraction force. So how do you determine the length? Well first you find the lateral acromion, which is about right there, and then right here you see the sulcus, and so below that you find the head of the humerus, which is about right here, and you just measure the distance between those two, right there, and if it's at least two centimeters, well then it's a positive test. The sensitivity of the sulcus sign test is very poor, only 28%. So, again, if somebody tests negative for the sulcus sign test, you can't necessarily say that they don't have inferior or multidirectional instability. However, if you have a positive sulcus sign test, meaning you have a sulcus greater than 2 centimeters, the specificity is excellent, 97%. So if it's positive, there's a 97% chance that they have this type of instability. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.